All right, folks, so today I'm gonna to show you how to do a coolant change on a Caterpillar C32 Acert. Um, now there's a few variations of this motor, but I think for the most part, everything I'm gonna show you will transfer to the majority of you. Um, but there's multiple spots where you wanna drain this motor. And one of these spots is just below the turbo. There's the turbo right here. And just down below, coming off of the exhaust manifold, which is uh, water-cooled. There's a little petcock valve. And there's one of those on both sides of the engine coming off of each exhaust manifold and just below the turbo manifold right here. Little petcock valve. So you'll wanna turn that. Now you wanna be careful with it. It's made of pretty soft metal. Um, you don't wanna grab it with, with a channel lock by the round part right here at the bottom. Or this may be a good time to just go ahead, pop it out and replace it. Um, as it is a wearing part and it could be uh, pretty stiff. But mine moved fairly easily after three years of the same coolant in it. Um, and there's one of those on the other side too. Remember to also do the other side. And what I did was I slid a hose right here and I collected it all in buckets. Um, it was a little over 20, 20 gallons, probably around 22 gallons total. And the other spot, once it's done draining out of there, you can still get more coolant out. Out of the... Uh, coolant analysis port. And what we did was we just went ahead and popped this out and uh, let it free flow. And that's just below the water pump off the front of the engine. Because there's the water pump, front of the engine, coolant analysis port. And we collected all of this in buckets. And once that was done draining, we used distilled water to flush out the engine from the top of the heat exchanger. Now there's a few variations of these heat exchangers, but that is the tip top, first and foremost portion of your engine. You know, that's, that's where you're just gonna fill it. That's the best place to do it from. Flush distilled water all the way through it. Um, and also, if you want it to run out a little faster when you're draining, sorry, I didn't mention this, but on the top of each turbo, you have a uh, the little port that you use to get air out of the system to kind of uh, prevent a bubble from happening. And that will allow more airflow to come into the engine and make it drain faster. And plus you're also gonna need it open once you go to fill the engine. So even when you're adding your distilled water, what we like to do is actually top the engine off with distilled water. And it's much easier to top it off when these are open because it tends to try to bubble up out of the heat exchanger if you're pumping it in there pretty fast. Um, so open these guys up, drain it once more, that's just to clean the system. And we also like to go ahead and take that time to remove the day tank and give it a good cleaning. After three years, that thing gets pretty gunky and nasty. Um, once that's complete, what you'll do is open up those valves in the back, all on top of the turbos once again, and start filling your engine with coolant. Um, I'm not sure if you have 50-50 or if you have uh, uh, concentrated, but uh, you know if you have concentrated, typically you want to dilute that with more distilled water. But in our case, we went ahead and used 50-50 just to save a little bit of time, have a little bit less work, and top it off. I like to fill it until it starts to flow out of both valves on the turbos. The other one is right across the way. So once it starts to flow out right here, I'll go ahead and cut that valve off. Once it starts to flow out of the other side, I'll go ahead and cut that valve off. Um, it actually will start flowing out of that side first in my case because it series from over there to over here. And then once I cut those off, I'll start to slowly fill the heat exchanger once more and get it up to the top. And I'll go ahead, once that's done, I'll put the cap back on, take my time, and fill up the day tank to where it needs to be. Then I'll run the engine, get it up to temperature, and it tends to suck more coolant down. And I usually have to run these engines a few times. Um, here at the dock, get them up to temperature before um, before uh, we're able to fill it up with coolant. It, it just, it pulls tons more coolant through. Um, we in, usually end up adding another few gallons. Um, now I would not recommend it, but uh, we do occasionally uh, take a rag and push down on the lid and partially crack it open just to let air bubbles out. Um, one of, the, one of the things that these engines are known for is once you do fill them up, uh, and you so suppose you go run 
um, you thought that it was completely full of coolant, but it may not have actually been full of coolant, is you'll go run, and even though the engine is not running hot, you'll get a low coolant alarm. That low coolant alarm, I've got another one right here, so be, but it's located on the side of the heat exchanger, right there, actually. And uh, with it being located right there, you can see that the heat exchanger doesn't have to be really all that low in coolant for, uh, for that alarm to be going off. So uh, if you have that, you, you probably have a bubble in the system somewhere if you're not able to add more coolant here. Um, but usually it's not too bad to get out. Uh, I've also been told that at first you can run the engines with the caps off. Uh, but all in all, that's pretty much the entire process. Um, even after you do add a ton of coolant, you're still gonna be getting uh, low coolant levels on the day tank and you're gonna have to add. And in my case, we usually have to add a few times for the first week. But uh, that's how you change the coolant on a Caterpillar C32.